The roulette wheel comprises 38 numbers, with 18 being red, 18 being black, and the remaining 2, 0, and double zero designated as green. A straightforward bet in roulette involves choosing one of the main colors, such as red. This type of bet is known as an even money bet, where a $1 wager either results in a win or loss of $1, contingent on the appearance of a red number. The probability of winning can be calculated based on the total number of outcomes. Given the 38 numbers, with each having an equal likelihood of occurrence, and 18 of them being red, the probability of winning is represented by the fraction 18 over 38, slightly under 50%. Evidently, this game presents a disadvantage to the player. According to basic economic principles, the very existence of casinos is illogical. This is because economic principles operate under the assumption that humans make rational decisions. Based on these principles, if an offer involved giving someone $100 in exchange for receiving only $94.80, it would be predicted that individuals would immediately reject such a deal. However, it remains puzzling that despite this existence, Perfectly rational individuals flock to the roulette table daily, effectively engaging in precisely that kind of transaction. Yes, the ball can fall on zero and double zero, the presence of these zeros complicates matters as they do not fall under the categories of red or black, nor do they qualify as even or odd. Eliminating the existence of zero and double zero in roulette would result in a perfectly logical game. In this hypothetical scenario, if one were to enter with $100 and play infinitely, they would leave with the same amount owing to the 50% likelihood of doubling their money with each play. However, the reality is different. With the inclusion of the zeros, the actual probability of doubling your money decreases to 47.4%. Consequently, for every dollar you play, you can anticipate a loss of 5.2 cents. Despite this disparity between fair odds and those offered by casinos and gambling institutions, these establishments globally generate over half a trillion dollars annually. Let's consider an example with two individuals, 50 and Drake, heading to the casino with a common goal, to win $100. They each employ different strategies and begin with varying amounts. Drake initiates with $100, opting for a concise approach. He places a one-time bet of $100 on red. If he loses, he quits. However, if he wins, as red pays out one to one, he achieves his objective of $100 and departs. 50, conversely, enters the casino with $10,000 but chooses a different tactic. He repeatedly wagers $1 on red until he either reaches $100 in winnings or exhausts his funds. He persists until one of these outcomes materializes. And remember, red bet pays out only what is staked. Consequently, he must accumulate 100 more wins than losses before depleting his entire balance. And also remember, there are 18 out of 38 spots that are red, which roughly equals a 47.4% chance any individual spin lands red. Now let's assess the likelihood of each individual achieving the goal of earning $100 and leaving the casino. Drake faces approximately a 47.4% chance of securing the $100, while also confronting a 32.6% chance of losing everything. Since he is making a single bet, the computation is straightforward. 50, in contrast, faces significantly lower odds for the same objective. With nearly the entire $10,000 expected to be depleted before reaching $100, his chance of winning that $100 is a mere 0.00265%. Let's approach this from a different angle, with the introduction of Larry, the wealthiest individual in the universe. Larry adopts the same betting strategy as 50, wagering $1 until he achieves 100 wins more than losses, except he begins with a colossal sum of $100 trillion. Despite this substantial financial advantage, the likelihood of him achieving the $100 goal remains at a mere 0.00265%, nearly assuring $100 trillion in losses before reaching $100. Thus, his situation mirrors that of 50. The apparent similarity in their odds might be perplexing, but upon careful calculation, a minute difference does exist. The disparity is so insignificant that it would require a high-precision calculator to discern. In essence, both Larry and 50 have almost identical chances of winning $100. Who knew? Casinos consistently maintain a statistical advantage, a crucial component of the gambling experience known as the house edge. Take, for instance, the slot machine, where an individual may strike it rich with a modest bet, but the machine and the house have a predetermined payout rate, typically around 90%, ensuring they retain a portion of the earnings. While the mechanics behind the house edge are straightforward, the psychological impact on our minds is more intricate. Research reveals that gamblers tend to accelerate their pace when experiencing losses, 
anticipating an impending substantial victory. To sustain player engagement, slot machines exploit what are termed near misses, presenting situations where players come close to winning, despite not achieving the desired outcome. Although this approach defies logic, the player interprets these near misses as almost successful attempts, triggering a surge of dopamine and prolonging the gameplay. Scientific findings suggest that the cognitive response to these near misses closely resembles the neurological reaction to actual victories, evoking a sense of excitement that eventually gives way to disappointment when one's funds deplete. We are informed that these machines are intentionally designed to provide frequent small wins, giving players the sensation of winning. Lights will flash during these wins, music will play, creating an illusion of success. However, the machine payouts are determined by thousands, if not millions of spins, so one should not expect to fare any better just because someone else lost a significant sum. So how do slot machines captivate you? It all begins with the game display, which is angled precisely at 38 degrees to promote an upright posture and ergonomic comfort. The music is usually set in the key of C major, known for its pleasing sound and ability to stand out in a bustling casino environment. Lastly, slot machines utilize credits to create a disconnect between your actual money and the credit system. This tactic masks financial losses and encourages continued play. Slot machines, similar to cell phones, are intentionally designed to be addictive, ensuring their consistent profit margins if left untouched. In the case of poker, things work a bit differently. Here, the casino takes a percentage of the pot known as the rake. This percentage typically falls somewhere between 5 to 20 percent, occasionally with a cap on the amount. Alternatively, you might pay for your seat at the game or be charged hourly or every 30 minutes. You may have heard of some classic strategies employed by casinos. One of these is the absence of clocks or windows, which makes it easier for people to lose track of time and consequently gamble more. It's a cleverly devious design choice that remains difficult to circumvent. These well-known tactics are attributed to Bill Friedman, a former gambling addict who managed to turn his life around and subsequently became wealthy by assisting casinos in hooking more people into the trap of gambling addiction. Having spent years advising casinos, Friedman authored a book titled Designing Casinos to Dominate the Competition, which delves into the most effective techniques for profiting off the public. One key principle outlined in the book is the necessity for casinos to feature a network of smaller, intimate, and crowded gaming areas, facilitating gamblers' focus on the machines and encouraging exploration opportunities. Physically segmented casinos are favored over open, sprawling gambling setups near casino entrances. Low ceilings are preferred over high ceilings, and short lines of sight are prioritized over extensive visual depth. The emphasis is on using gambling equipment as the main decor rather than incorporating traditional decorations. The utilization of various interior settings and gambling ambulances is also recommended. Friedman's fourth principle, the maze layout beats long straight walkways, introduces the concept of avoiding 90-degree turns. He argues that such sharp turns serve as decision points that trigger the decision-making part of the brain, compelling individuals to choose a specific direction, potentially leading them to opt to exit the casino. According to Friedman's book, Passageways in casinos should maintain a continuous flow through gentle curves and angles to create a seamless transition between directions. He documented that, after altering an entryway from a right turn to a curved turn, the strategy resulted in a doubling of the number of guests entering that area. Moreover, casinos strategically arrange exits to be inconspicuous, often obstructing them with tables or other objects, fostering a false hope of recouping losses before leaving the premises. Friedman's gaming design theory continues to influence casino layouts, with many establishments still implementing his principles. Alongside this, a newer trend known as playground design is gaining traction. The pioneer behind this innovative approach is currently leading the charge in revolutionizing casino aesthetics. Roger Thomas, the mastermind behind playground design, challenged the traditional Friedman design principles, which advocated for small, unadorned casino spaces. Thomas was of the view that such cramped and unattractive environments discouraged prolonged stays and reduced betting activity. To counter this, he focused on creating opulent, inviting spaces that induced a sense of comfort and relaxation, thereby encouraging guests to linger and wager more. Thomas collaborated with hotelier Steve Wynn to construct the Bellagio, a lavish $1.6 billion casino featuring expansive rooms, high ceilings, ample skylights, an absence of clocks, unobstructed sight lines, and intricate decorations. The strategy proved highly successful, with the Bellagio reaping unprecedented profits in the history of Las Vegas, generating four times the revenue per room compared to an average casino. Thomas's playground model promoted an atmosphere conducive to relieving mental fatigue, demonstrating that individuals are inclined to stay longer in beautiful, serene settings compared to unappealing, stressful ones. Who knew?
Casinos often employ additional strategies to maximize their profits, such as having attractive women present to appeal to male players' desire for admiration. Moreover, the provision of complimentary alcohol has a significant impact on a player's decision-making, as the effects of several drinks can alter their strategic thinking and reduce their awareness of potential losses. So what are some mathematically gambler-favorable games to play? Statistical analyses have revealed that certain casino games offer more favorable odds than others. Among these, studies indicate that blackjack and craps have the lowest house advantage overall. In blackjack, your chances of winning stand at 49%, while in craps, it's nearly 50%. It's essential, however, to play blackjack with precision and understanding to fully leverage these odds. Moreover, if you're betting on the red or black in roulette, the odds of winning hover around 47.4%, as previously mentioned. Notably, the most profitable games for casinos, following slot machines, include blackjack, baccarat, roulette, and craps.